Hey y'all, welcome back to SSX Blur. I'm Insetic. With me again is Blank Tester. Hey kids, how's it going? And Zindictive. Hey guys. We're gonna be going to the last tournament. You know, beating the game, seeing the Woo! credits here. Finally. Um, yeah, we got the third outfit. Like finally, as well. <sighs> yeah, that is pretty dope. Out, I like slow. that. We've almost got full stats. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, it's pretty much the only thing left to do. Yeah. I also mm. kind of prefer the second outfit. But that's just me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, on the rocks. Yeah. Uh -huh. On the rocks. We're up here, and this is gonna be the magnum opus. Ah, Perfect your name. Magnus Opus. My Magnus Opus, yeah. I knew we were going to do that. That's yeah, why I was, that's why I was waiting, ma you know, making it real Magnus. awkward, but waiting to see it before you know, I said... Magnum you know Opus. what, Connor? I feel like we got that from Jake and Amir, but I don't know if we did. Uh, it's, it's, it seems like something that could happen from Jake and Amir. It's time to yeah. get serious. Yeah. yeah. Ruthless race. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna see Ruthless again. Uh, and now racing, so it's not just that one little slow mm. part. Again, you know, they made Ruthless like they really changed up at least the top of it, making it really, like, foggy. And I swear that they, like, made this first part actually a little longer. Like, going between the rocks on these icy paths before the first, you know, real big drop, I feel is longer than it was in SSX3. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm noticing that. You know what? I, what if, okay, what if they made uh, an SSX game again, uh, but it's a roguelike and there's procedural generation for the uh, mountains? Basically, <laughs> descenders the, on snowboards. Yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah. This, okay, yeah, that's true. Fuck, you're right. That <laughs> I is, mean, yeah, I, that could work, maybe. I, mean, I don't I'd, know. I'd want that, maybe not with the SSX name, but yeah, yeah. that's true. That would be a total change. Yeah, you'd really Descenders need to do Winter Edition. Like, I'd yeah. accept that, you know? Yeah, yeah fair enough. Yeah, Pretty okay. Much. I said it as a crazy idea, but it's really not that crazy. I was just thinking, like, the area that you said they thought you thought made longer, you could make that, like, a separately procedurally generated area, and then the rest of it is all static. You know? Or, like, there are sections of the, of the thing that change when you're, you know, between times you play, but, like, the rest of it is, is basically the same, you know? Like, you could do that pretty yeah. easily, I think. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think well. each track, you'd probably need to make less tracks total in order to save on budget, right? Because Yeah, I mean, like, again, if you're following the Descenders idea, that's, what, like, eight environments? Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, four main ones, four for per plus. Though, true. in a way, I much more prefer if, like, SSX would have, you know, actually created tracks that have, you know, a lot yeah, of no. set pieces and such going on, rather than just, Especially... you know, randomly generated. Yeah, especially with, like, rail lines and, like, jumps and, like, visual spectacle and, like, yeah. cool, you know, like, SSX has some really cool, like, like that, that right there where a single branch reaches out from the edge of a thing and then you get to see a huge look over the next area, you yeah. know, like, you can't yeah. get that with procedural generation. I, well, I guess maybe you could, but, like, I don't know how you would. I think you would need to train the right. I want generation. the set pieces, yeah. Like yeah. since SSX free, it's like the whole can about the characters thing has just been kind of put to it's the side. Now it's all about bit. the tracks. Yeah, that's what it does feel like. So you know, actually, yeah, SSX twenty twelve. Even that continues that tradition because, like, I picked Mac because I had some name recognition for him because, like, I'd watched Connor and our other friends play. SSX and they all basically pick Mac and so I was like okay yeah I, I, I get it but like I don't feel like I got any of his personality really in mm. that game yeah like 2012 everyone was just wearing like jumpsuits right yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah it was nice to play as the characters and not like as your own person again yeah but again it, it was just sort of like oh maybe when they said stuff their voices were different yeah but, but it was like I, like, they didn't say stuff that was so... Like, can you remember a single line from that game? Uh, I remember Probably. some of Simon's just because it was sad, again, seeing Simon get less crazy every game. Oh, yeah. you know, in Tricky, you know, his, his debut with the craziest, he, you know, it's like, FULL BURGER PLATTER, MAN! And then yeah, in he was like it's from... just like, FULL BURGER PLATTER, MAN! Oh. It well, was I like, mean, yeah. you say some of the same seven. lines, but also you, uh, you know, you, you just sound like you're trying to be cool. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, I, flat. I, 
<laughs> I feel like if he got less crazy in each game, it'd be like, <laughs> the first game he's this full burger platter, man, and then like in the last game he's just like, oh, I'm getting mad. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's a real uh. basic game. Balanced <laughs> diet with lots of vitamins, man. Uh, You're gonna I'm make me go rend the face. Ooh. After yeah, after Simon wins uh, SSX 2012 or whatever, the next one he settles uh, down and becomes a family man. You know, yeah. like Guile. <laughs> yeah. You know what it is? You know what it is? His, you know, he was he started out really crazy at the beginning, but therapy's working really well for him. He's <laughs> yeah. really getting yeah. through his shit, <laughs> and now he's he's doing better. But does therapy make him a better person? Does it make him a better snowboarder? So he should cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't make you better at snowboarding, it's not worth doing. Yeah. yeah. That's the motto I live by. That's why I'm so good at snowboarding. <laughs> yeah. Never been. Yep. I don't... Oh, man. I <sighs> don't know if I'd like to go. Uh, I've had, I don't know. I'm scared. Yeah, yeah, I've had again, the like thoughts, my... but it's like... Eh. Yeah, like when I was a kid... You know, my parents would take like a once a year trip sure. over somewhere in like Missouri to uh, an area that would, you know, put fake snow up on the on the mountain. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I, I huh. can't remember what it was called or whatever. And I never did that great because I've got horrible balance or whatever. Basically, mm. every year I'd have to retake the, you know, s learning to ski for beginners course. And I uh. don't actually think I ever did snowboarding. I'm just this is my winter sports in real life. Story. Right. Uh, and. Mm. Yeah, I, I never really did super... I mean, I was a kid, but, like, yeah. I never really stuck with it. Yeah, yeah. I... Man, that sounds... It sounds kind of... Kind of fun, but it's... All, I'm, like, also very afraid that I'm gonna embarrass myself, and... Mm. Right. And I will, I will just have a memory of, you know... I mean, like, I'm almost 30. Today, as we record this, it's actually my brother's 30th birthday. Okay. Um, and so, uh, I'm getting old, you know? And, like, yeah. as I'm getting old, I'm getting much more liable to just cry in public. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, from, from, like, 12 to 20, I cried maybe once. And then since then, uh, it's just been getting more and more. And so, you know, I'll... G and I don't mean, like, be because I'm sad. I mean because, like, I'm embarrassed or I feel overwhelmed. I'm just much more likely to cry. So I don't want to remember my time trying to snowboard and it turns into me walking away and crying silently to myself when the that's age not a memory hits. I want. <laughs> and you know you know it'll be 1000 times harder than you can even imagine it being yeah. oh yeah. yeah it's one of those things where you are just straight up not taking to, into account like how, <laughs> how hard, hard it, it would is. actually be yeah. yeah like even before we get like even if it was easy I might goof it up and get embarrassed but like it's not easy it's not magnum opus yeah, for some reason, this is the only event where, even if you place first in all heats, you have to do all three heats. Oh. Like, in every other race, every other event, and every other tournament, you place first in the first heat, you can go straight to the third. But here, oh. you have to do all three heats of the race. I don't know. Well, I mean, it's huh. Magnum Opus. They want you to go the full mile, I guess. Yeah, but then the rest of the events in Magnum Opus, you place first in the first heat, and you can go straight to the third. Yeah, weird. I don't know. Mm. Um, is there? Can you punch the other riders? Okay, so that's a weird thing. Yes, but like it's almost like the game does it automatically. Oh, like, I've seen my rider do that, but none of my inputs cause a punch. <laughs> so it really huh. does feel like the rider would just automatically just do that decides. if they were lined up just right. Huh. All right. It's weird. Yeah. I mean. Knocking over the other snowboarders was never a main important thing in the SSX series. It was, was it? effective so, though, because it, in oh, that's true. and three, it would give you full boost immediately. Yeah. Oh, like, okay. So would, there was an incentive to do it, yeah, but not yeah, like it would super. Get you, it would get you full boost and ability to do Ubers immediately. And then in on tour, it got really nerfed. Oh. On tour, it barely gave you any boost, and the rider was so pissed at you, they'd hunt you down for the rest of the seven minute event. Yeah. Mm. But yeah. I mean, they're trying to, um... It does seem like they're kind of, yeah, they're kind of like, you know, staying away from the violence, I guess. Because it's just like, now it's automatic. Now it's not even a button press. 
It's also super rare, though. Like, like, I, you know, you start out next to everyone at the very start of these races. Well, like, every time. But, like, every so often, my guy will punch someone down. Hmm. I don't know. So it's like, it's there, but you can't control it. I think the fact that game is even, like, mentioned... I don't think the game even mentions about the attacking thing either. I feel like they're just kind of hiding it intentionally for that very purpose. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Oh, my Jesus. I thought you were going to crash that for sure. Yeah? You're not really doing any Ubers. I mean, are you just trying to, like... Well, I guess you already have Ubers, so, like, what's the fucking point? Yeah, like, one, I forgot I was going to do a third heat, so all of this in my mind while doing it is just like, ugh, well, I have to do it now, even though I, you know, thought I didn't have to. Uh, mm. So I'm not trying super hard. But uh, two, obviously you don't need to do Ubers to do ra win races. Um, but yeah, I, I get more into like, yeah, let me just do some along the way near the end here. But yeah, I mean, like, no, to just get a race done, Mac just spin and flip and get your boost that way. Yeah. I don't feel like the Ubers really help out too much with some of these races. It just seems mm -hmm. like, you know, yeah. normal tricks and combos do the job enough. Yeah, because yeah. you, can, you can't get unlimited boost at all mm -hmm. in this game. So there is no point to deliberately going out of your way to do Ubers. Yeah. Huh. It's like it's like removing unlimited boost hey, 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 for whatever reason they did. Snake, well, I guess motion control is probably right is part of the reason, but... Um, you, uh, you know, they, it had knock-on effects about how the, you play the rest of the game. Yeah, it, it seems like with Uber is they're now only really useful for just these tricking events. Yeah, you get the points you need. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. That's you right up to the rail. <laughs> oh. oh, here comes the big jump. Hell yeah. Here comes something big. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess I'm, I am getting some more of that, like, uh, temple theming that I was missing. Yeah, it's showing up. Yeah. Yeah, again, I guess, like, Peak 3, they did try more to get sort of a common theme throughout them. Because, I mean, yeah, like, Ruthless on the Rocks, History Lesson. Yeah. And they do some temple stuff with, like, on the Rocks and History Lesson here. And Ruthless at least has that same kind of color palette. Mm -hmm. Like a purple more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Purple dotted with little bits of, like, orange. I think, honestly, this game could be a lot more vibrant. That would be really cool. You know? Like, really, really turn up the color. Um, yeah, I, I the, feel like... Tracks. With SSX3, it was, like, very colorful, even, you know, throughout all of its levels, and really, it just uh -huh. had, like, a nice style to it. Whereas this one... I feel like they're also trying to go for a real thing here, but... It's they, weird, because, like, the characters yeah. are very cartoony, but then, like, the environments kind of feel very realistically colored. There's a clash going on, a and it's bit, not yeah. quite working out. I yeah. think, like... Because, again, this is a combination of 3 and On Tour, and mm -hmm. On Tour was all about making a very consistent mountain. Yeah. Um, that they probably stuck more with that and adapted yeah. the SSX3 stuff to match. That's true. That's mm. probably true. Because, you know, once you have a uniform thing, you know what it should look like. You know, you can yeah. always refer back to it. Yeah. It would have been nice to maybe take from the SSX3 card of, you know, the coloring and all of that, and, you know, make it a little bit more colorful instead of just plain white for the most part. I mean, there's a bit of a Gosh. pink hue going on, but... Yeah. But that's cool. I mean, like, I like it. Yeah. It, it kind of makes... You know what it makes me feel like? It makes me feel like we're tripping on lotus flowers. <laughs> you know? Whoa. Damn. The, the slowdown, the zoom in, the the colors. Like, maybe we are. I don't know. Ooh. Yeah, whoa. I Man, I... I th seeing this is making me want to go travel the world. <laughs> you know? It's just like, I've never actually been on top of, like, a... Like a Snowy mountain peak. Place. You know? That'd I mean, be really I, cool. I haven't touched snow before. I'm in Australia. There is you no snow here. You haven't touched snow at all? Oh, man. I I yeah, Australia thought... no, doesn't I guess, have yeah. snow at all. We never snow here. Yeah. Damn. Sucks. Huh. That's going to be Zin's GoFundMe, you know? <laughs> yeah. I want to touch snow before I die. Give me money so I can. Yeah. Do you think we could mail him some snow? 
You know, a as a kid, I tried to like take a snowball when it snowed like first time or whatever and keep it in the freezer all winter mm -hmm. because I thought you could. Uh, very okay. quickly, it turned into just an ice rock that got you know, smaller and smaller, <laughs> yeah. so it didn't really work out. But like, imagine that if you could like just put snow in the freezer and you know keep some. Wasn't that a? Isn't there a Calvin and Hobbes comic where he like Probably. hits? I think yeah. he, like he hits Susie with you know a snowball. Oh man! Actually, there's a there's a there's a guy I've been watching recently called uh, Internet Shaquille. I don't know if you guys know him, Net Shack. Um, but he does like cooking videos, and he's like really down to earth. Really makes great videos, really short and to the point, and, mm. and whatever. He has a video about shaved ice, and like as soon as I watched it, I was like, and he even at the very beginning he says like, this video is only going to apply to maybe one percent of my viewers tops because nobody needs a shaved ice machine. And <laughs> I, as soon as the video was over, I was just thinking to myself like, man, what I could do? I should get a shaved ice machine. <laughs> Like, I don't know, man. I, it just seems like a thing to do. But you could totally use a shaved ice machine to make a snowball. Yeah. In the middle of summer, you know? That'd be cool. Or just buy one of those snow machines. And yeah. And, like, shoot it at your house and cover your house in snow. Yeah. Or at least what if you had front. somebody? What if you had somebody just, like, uh, like, you hire somebody to cut the lawn, and then you hire somebody else, or maybe the same guy, to go by with the snow machine and just blow snow on your, uh, on your home. Every day. Damn. Yeah, mm. just to keep a real... I, I feel like a very Christmassy celebrity should do that. Yeah, and honestly, I'm gonna say this right now, because I might be like, one guy who might think this. No, Christmas has not changed this fact with Australia having no snow. In fact, when it's Christmas, it is just red-hot summertime. Yeah. Yeah, it's just... While you guys are getting frozen, we're getting burnt. <laughs> are you, I would much rather get frozen. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't envy your heat. But, mm. I, I, you know, since you brought it up, I'm wondering. So, Santa Claus, still a thing, obviously. Yep. Right? Does he wear something different? Yes, he does. Okay, and so he's like, he's like shorts. A, I'm not joking about this. There's a freaking story for kids and such about Santa driving a ute and hanging out with a kangaroo. That sounds incredible. <laughs> yeah. The children need that kind of thing. Yep. <laughs> what else will they believe in? Oh, man. It's well. just a weird story, but it exists, and it's part of Australia's <laughs> freaking storylines. Well, you know what? That's pretty fucking cool. Yeah. I'd hang out with a kangaroo. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I saw Kangaroo Jack. You know. Yeah, yeah, I saw Kangaroo Jack. <laughs> Australia's just like that, right? Yeah. And that's... kangaroos are just like that. <laughs> that was a documentary. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, does. with Anthony Anderson as host. <laughs> yeah. I really oh want. God. I really want. Uh, I feel like that would be like a, a true blood and great thing. Talking about Kangaroo yeah. Jack being a documentary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Kangaroo Jack with uh, Anthony Bourdain, right? <laughs> Oh god! Ugh. Or uh, some other oh maybe. man. Man, uh, what a head rush that was. <laughs> well, oh, I mean, gosh. we've mentioned it before. Did you know that Kangaroo Jack actually won the Kids' Choice Award for Best Fart in a Movie? Mm hmm. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, so it's an award winning film. It's an award winning film. <laughs> it's an award winning fart. Mm -hmm. It was Anthony Anderson. Eat your fart out. Eat your fart out. Get it? Like, eat your heart out? Yeah. Yeah. But I said he... Actually, I'm, I wish I had said it, to be honest. <laughs> if we're being completely honest here, I wish I hadn't said that. Nice. Okay. Bath up to restart. Yeah. Oh, that's a really cool picture. I wish hmm. I got to see it longer. Right, like the red sun over a bunch of spikes, like that's so fucking. I think that was actually the background. Yeah, it's the background. I think it is, but like I. <laughs> that level didn't load for a second. Oh, that I, is I what it is. I don't pay attention to skyboxes when playing. You know this. Yeah, so. exactly. I mean, yeah. I, I, the only reason I get to see him is because I'm not playing. Dominates the finish. Yeah. I, no I do one. feel like when they developed this game, they had a lot of good ideas. It's just. There was some ideas that just didn't execute well. Nah, that's I feel problem. like, 
I feel I feel like uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I just I feel like they didn't have the the the, the manpower, or money, or time probably to Wake up. you, don't you know execute on their favorite ideas. Yeah, I mean you'll actually see the cast list at the end of this oh, event. Right, this you video, know, because I'll yeah. beat the game. You'll see the I did, why did I say cast list? You'll see the credits. You'll see Whoa. how many people were involved in the making of this. <laughs> yeah, mm, you know. Is it and a big I'm not team? saying that as I, I wasn't saying that as like, look, there's so many damn people. I'm yeah. saying that as literally like, you'll be able to see for yourself. Um, yeah. And, and if it's big or small, yeah. 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 I just had to check for the developers just in case, and it's like it's EA Montreal who, on to and Blur, they where they're only as sex games. What else do they do? Oh, uh, they did skate it. Skate it, okay. Which was think... the Wii exclusive entry in the Skate yeah. series, much yeah. like this is the Wii exclusive entry in SSI. I mean, also that the doesn't Wii surprise me at all. entry for Need of Speed, Need for Speed with Need for Speed Nitro. Okay, yeah, it makes sense. There, These guys are probably, like, specialists on uh, motion controls rather than, like, general game devs, you know? Because mm. it does require a very specific set of skills, you know? And, like, uh, they you have also to have made no Army of Two. For the Wii? Uh, not for the Wii, for the PS3 360, and they made the no sequel and the way. other sequel. What? Yeah, the, I mean, have two se uh, games were made by Montreal. Huh. Okay. Interesting. Those games are really weird. <laughs> I have honestly played found them? them fun. I have played the 40th day. I thought it was really fun. Yeah, no, I mean, they're... They're really goofy. Like I don't, I don't know if the 40th day is as good as uh, the first one, or maybe better. Um... But, like, the first one is so strange how, like, arcadey it is. It's literally, like... Oh, yeah. You go through a very linear level, and you're, cons you're constantly, like, sprinting, but in third person... Like, you know how in Doom you move really fast? But, yeah. like, you're not seeing yourself, so it's it doesn't look weird? In Army of Two, the original, you move so fast, and it's in third person, so it, like, looks really weird how fast you're running around and shooting people. And then, like... You'll just go like through linear sections of the game, and then they'll stop you and be like, "You want some different guns instead?" Yeah, and then... Army Army of Two is like a very arcadey shooter series. I was not the expecting the sequel it to be was so... the same. Yeah, and it's and then it, it's it's really weird when I don't know the story got like relatively serious, but also preposterous. It was like, turns out you guys work for the bad guys too, so you go kick ass. And it's like, <laughs> I don't, I don't know what the fuck. It was stupid fun, but it was good oh, yeah. stupid fun. It was very good stupid fun. Yeah. I don't know if they should make another one. But... I mean, they made three from the series, so I mean... Did they really make three? I thought they only made yeah, two. Yeah, and uh, the third but game the I made was their last quick, game. Right? Yeah, they... Because it was like, wasn't it like, Army of Two was not a surprise, but kind of welcome for being like, deliberately two-player and all yeah. built around that. And then, yeah, like, Army of Two, Two and Three, I guess it was like, yeah, let's cash in on them, but they weren't as good. Yeah, yeah the 40th like, day and the Devil's Cartel. The Devil's Cartel. That's the yeah. one I was forgetting. And that was the last game from Montreal before essentially got closed down. Oh. The looks of things. Yeah. Did they get folded into another studio? Yeah, I think they were put into uh, Motive Studios or whatever, so... Oh. Yeah. Huh. Okay, well... That's rest all right. in peace or something. Yeah, rest in peace, I guess. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Ow. Well, that was it. We That's won. It? Hell and, yeah. Uh, yeah, we beat the magnum opus. Dude, did you seriously just do that? How totally off the register. I don't even know how to quantify your gratitude. Give it up for the latest career level SSX Superstar Sponsors, are you paying attention? This cat has super matula skills. Get on your feet and raise the roof. All right. All right. That was, that was cute. Absolutely, positively. Yeah. yeah. And then, that was cute. career overview. How much did I do? Uh, again, I went and got, you know, did all the single events to get the stat points and such for that. I showed off, like... Felix. A couple challenges, but I didn't do the rest, uh, so I didn't really get any boards or skis. But again, eh. they're basically just like every combination of plus one in one set, minus one in another. Um, but yeah, then you get to see the team and 
hopefully this will answer your question. Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, like, see. for their attempt at making a motion game and essentially being the first of sex motion game and the only one, I think they didn't do that bad a job. It's just yeah. that they had a bit of an issue with the motion and also the brightness might have been a bit too much. Yeah. But other than I that, mean, I mean, it was okay, it was solid, yeah, it was nothing okay. special. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they had a lot of people on the, uh, the art team. But I mean, yeah, they have to create whole new assets and stuff. I think additional art is probably like, they did something for the comfort of the game, or something like that, but not in the game. Mm. Same thing with, like, uh, uh, additional programming. I think that would probably be something like, um, you built the f some part of the physics engine and then we just licensed it, you know? Yeah. That's probably what it is. Not much on the audio team. I mean, you just need, like, one one good audio director to to direct things. In the yeah. Movie. Yeah. Marketing and PR. How much marketing was there? I don't remember. Uh, a bit. <laughs> Five people's worth. Yeah, yeah. Like I wasn't into the Wii Junkie at all XL. at that time. Yeah, mm -hmm. like I was Xbox 360 all the way through. So, one voice actor, Mark Hildreth. Good old Mark. Is that DJ Atomica? I think I that is. Yeah, because the characters don't say anything. Yeah. So it's yeah. Okay. Mark Hill. I'm just gonna look him up. At least the testers here on a mistake like Gravity Games Bike. <laughs> yeah, there were also only like three testers. Yeah. But again, I guess it's take out, take on tour, put motion controls in. So like you already know that the base engine and everything's gonna work. Yeah, I. I... <sighs> oh yeah, you see DJ Atomica. Okay, cool. Who right, DJ cool. Atomica appears in uh, SSX3, Blur, 2012, and Burnout Paradise. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, Burnout Paradise was like, yeah, did the DJ Atomica thing. Yeah, and so he he's also been in a bunch of stage productions and stuff. I mean, he's, okay. he's famous enough to have. Wait, what? Oh, he was part of Nexium. What oh, Nexium? no. Okay. Nexium is a cult. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Nexium is a oh, cult no. that did a bunch of criminal shit. I'm really, oh. really... Oh, come oh, on, no. bud. DJ, what, what have you like, done? What, where is he now? Is he, like, in jail? He, or he, No, he left the organization... Jeez. Okay, you know oh, what? Thank God. He left the organization between 2016 and 2017 upon finding out about the... the about some of the stuff that Nexium did. So you found out that they were If you're interested in Nexium, like... by the way, if you're interested in Nexium, uh, there's a channel I think called the, Ill the Illuminati or something. I don't remember what her name is, but uh, she makes really good videos, and uh, she has a really cool video series about Nexium, which is about like all the <sighs> crime stuff. I don't want to say all the crime stuff here, but it's really really bad. Um, he showed us these teams on whose shoulders we stood. Oh wow, that's sure great. Did. That's his and the babies. babies. Yeah. <laughs> There's a part of the wow. music that sounds like like a squeaking chair or something. I keep thinking my squirt chair is squeaking. Well, there it is. There we uh, go. It kind of kicks you back to the menu. Yeah, yeah but then uh, you go in on career and you go look at your guy. Am I going to show that? It gives you a new, like, you know, progress, like where you are progress wise. It'll give you like, like completed or something rather than just like peak one, two, three unlocked. Uh, this is... Actually, not the end. There is a secret tournament uh, oh. that you can unlock by oh. breaking the records, getting a platinum medal. Yeah. Oh, so, shit. Oh, God. Kind of like, yeah, we will have sort of like a bonus part, an extra part. Oh, you, so you did get this it. Okay. Game. I did get it. Yeah, we have one more part. Yeah, wrapping up this game. I know nice. I, I worded it all like, this is the finale, da da da. But I mean, they do intend it to be kind of a secret bonus. So, sure. Yeah. You know. Mm. Uh, yeah, we'll see that next time on SSX Explorer.